I love when my guests are right. I don't I don't want people to lose money, but I do love when people come up with smart theses and, and they are actually right. But I just I haven't seen you be right about this big sell off. That's right. The TV host just called out Gordon Johnson and this doesn't really usually happen. She was actually prepared and pushed back against Gordon Johnson and guess what Gordon Johnson did? Nothing. The host just let it sort of slide because she said, oh, we're just going to move on to the next thing. And you know, Gordon Johnson always loves to interrupt. And even if somehow he cannot, he finds a way to get back to that question and eventually address it anyway. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. What happened to Gordon? He just seemed a little bit off today. Maybe a breakup, bad day, bad sleep. I mean, earlier, if you watched Gordon and you have never heard of him and you know nothing about Tesla stock, you thought this guy is a genius. But this time, there's no way you would have come away with that conclusion because he just didn't get back to that question. This one was a fun one. Let's dive in. Let's welcome in our guest, Gordon Johnson, CEO, founder, GLJ Research. Thank you for being with us. Was Gordon warming up? What was this all about? You've been on with us for years, and uh, people who don't know you are a <laughs> notorious bear when it comes to Tesla. Tesla came out with its quarterly numbers. In fact, these were records. The China sales, second Ooh. best ever. Somehow during this video, there were a few beeps going on like that. I think really it's just an alarm going off over at TD, alarming all of us. Oh, Gordon Johnson is about to tell a lie about this particular fact. In for wholesale numbers in March. Um, but what say you? I know you didn't like something. Tell us. Look at that smile. She knows exactly what Gordon is about to do. Yeah, hey, Nicole. I, I, thanks for having me. Good to see you. You look great. Um, I, I don't see us as a, a perma bears or bears. I just see us as realists. Deep down, I actually wonder, is Gordon Johnson possibly a huge Elon Musk fan? I have some evidence. Check this out. His average return per Tesla stock rating is 69%. I'm not kidding. This is real. Minus 69%, which is Elon's favorite number. Maybe Gordon is actually bullish. Maybe he actually wants to buy Tesla stock. He's just helping us punish Tesla stock, make it go down, and then we can buy cheaper. Numbers started out in the quarter. The street estimate started out around 438. It came down to around 430. They did roughly 423. The issue is very simple. They produced 440,000 cars. They sold 423,000 cars. They're producing more cars than they're selling. And this is the record fourth straight quarter in a row that they produced more cars than they're selling, despite margin slashing price cuts, which we think are gonna render their actual results in Q1 much worse than what the street is modeling. Um, so so that's right the there. fundamental issue. And, and keep in mind, their factories are operating two factories in? at 20 to 40% yeah. utilization. Classic Gordon Johnson, ignoring the person trying to ask you a question as if that person does not even exist. And they shut down the Shanghai factory multiple times. They just can't sell what okay. they're producing. Okay, so <laughs> because you and I have spoken before, I prepared mentally for you to say. Did you catch that? I felt genuine pain and frustration in her voice. She's like, ah, I'm going to speak to Gordon Johnson today. Hmm. I need to prepare. I don't like to prepare for this one because it's just so ridiculous. But I have to this time. They're not delivering as many cars as they produce, said Gordon right. Johnson every time he comes on. The shots have been fired. So I looked at the 2022 production and deliveries. They weren't that far off from each other. Um, you tell me, okay, I know you say this every day. Okay, we went from shots fired to now dropping bombs. Deliveries were 1.313 million and production was 1.369 million. Okay, so I know there were more produced than delivered, but not that much more and it's my understanding demand is still very prevalent for teslas yeah so so nicole just think about it right let's say you're gonna go buy a porsche uh except you won't because the deal on a tesla is much better than the deal on the porsche and the price is a hundred thousand dollars and they cut the price by 20 percent 
which is uh, we, we believe the average price cut for Tesla this quarter is around 15 percent. The demand response will be massive. It's called elasticity of demand. When you cut price, the demand is supposed to at least match the price cut. They've cut prices roughly 15 percent in the first quarter. The, 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 the deliveries are up just roughly 4 percent. So you can't look backwards. You have to look forward, given all this competition coming. So the fact that they're, they're, the, the demand response isn't matching the price cut, despite the fact that their plants aren't running at full utilization, this is just a car company that has that is doing, engaging in margin slashing price cuts. We believe they're going to have to cut prices again imminently. Um, and we think that's going to result in significantly lower margins. It's just a car company that's having to compete. And, 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 and given what we think the earnings are going to be this year, it's trading at 100 times forward earnings when the industry trades at six times. Gordon, please take a look at this chart. As you will see, the first quarter of a year for Tesla is always relatively difficult. Growth is very small and sometimes it's actually negative compared to the previous quarter or it's basically non-existent. This quarter, we actually had some growth. It's not a lot, but we did have some growth and we still grew over 35% year over year. Not to mention that global battery electric vehicle sales for BYD shrunk from the last quarter versus Tesla's increased deliveries. And where is he getting that 100x price to earnings ratio from? It is literally 50. You just go to Yahoo Finance and it will show you the consensus number. Don't just make up numbers, please. I mean, Gordon is free to use his own, but when he is that wrong, I can't rely on his numbers. <laughs> I would much rather use the consensus number. The lower the PE ratio, by the way, is, the cheaper the stock usually is. Look, Where we think there's significant downside. Where's your price, yeah, price target? Price target is roughly $24.33 end of this year. We think it gets there. We think when they report Q1 earnings, I think a lot of analysts are going to have to take a, a look, good long look in the mirror and realize this isn't a margin leading company. I feel like Gordon Johnson's really talking about himself. He's telling himself, you have to look in the mirror, man. You have been talking about Tesla stock going down and it, it's just not happening. It, it, $24.33. Yeah, his price targets never actually came true for Tesla stock. He sounds like one of these people that try to quit smoking or drinking or actually lose a lot of weight and they keep talking about it and it just never happens. He keeps talking about Tesla stock going down and it just never happens. They're getting their, their lunch taken in both China and the US as well as Europe by BW. Wish, China BYD, just... US Ford, B, um, uh, BW, uh, sorry, BYD in China. Uh, um, VW in, in, in yeah. Europe. So they're just facing a lot of problems. You know, uh, Gordon, I almost wish you were a little more, um, I don't want to say in the game because you're very much in the game, a little closer to current levels. Like, had you said this is a $100 stock, you know, it did dip down to 101 bucks at one point, but then everybody bought it. It's closer to $200. To say 25 bucks. I mean, just feels so far away and it hasn't been anywhere. New. We've had you on the show many, many times. I love chatting with you. I'm, I'm waiting to see. I love when my guests are right. I don't I don't want people to lose money, but I do love when people come up with smart theses and, and they are actually right. But I just I haven't seen you be right about this big sell off. I guess we're waiting on it. I mean, the Berlin factory and the Gigafactory in Texas both came on board in 2022 and both of those factories supposedly are going to continue to help it and that it's not just a car company that in fact it's a battery company and uh, you know all kinds of other energy and all that i don't know let's move on gordon johnson loves interrupting and if he had an answer he would have and if for some reason he can't interrupt then he will always find a way to at least get back to that question a little bit later once he has a chance to speak but spoiler alert he doesn't get back to that. He just pretends it has never happened and that he was not called out, that he was never actually right. He doesn't even try to say, oh, you know what? Um, yeah, actually, there was this one time that I was uh, not horribly wrong and Tesla stock hit my price target. He didn't say that because, <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't happen. 10 seconds. Do you have one you love and you think is going higher in the world of EVs? 
we, we've always said we like BYD. We, we agree with uh, Warren Buffett, even though he okay. sold a lot of shares recently. And, and when you say, one, last, one, one quick thing, when you say Tesla's a, a battery company, that, that's just not true. Uh, they're not a battery company. They're buying batteries from Panasonic, CATL, 4680 battery. Um, it, it's actually worse on density um, uh, than, than the existing uh, battery structures. So they're missing the boat there. So um, okay. we think Tesla has issues. And with respect to Rivian, being valued at a third the value of Honda, I just think that's a bit uh, that's a bit rich. I skipped a roughly two or three minute part where he was talking about Rivian and he was also earlier talking about how a Tesla is dead last when it comes to FSD, despite having the biggest fleet of actual real vehicles that collect data. So he was talking for a few minutes about other things and about Rivian. And he managed to get back to this point that Tesla is not a battery company, but he didn't mention anything about then he was called out by Nicole, by the TV host, basically saying, Gordon, you suck. He did not address that at all. And that's really the right move, because how could he? There is no way to address your horrible track record. The best way is just to stay quiet, don't say anything about it, and just stick to your story. But to me, what was really hilarious was when at the end of December and in the beginning of January, I started seeing some people saying, oh, Gordon Johnson was right all along. Even a broken clock is going to be right twice in a 24-hour period. And Gordon Johnson is that broken clock about Tesla stock. If eventually, somehow, Gordon Johnson actually ends up being right temporarily about Tesla stock, it will be purely because of luck not because of accurate predictions and Gordon's skill. I am still absolutely stunned that back in early January, some people actually believed that he was right all along. It just shows how easily people can sometimes be influenced then they are experiencing certain emotions and then someone is predicting, yeah, actually, with the feeling that you have that everything is horrible right now for Tesla stock and you think, yeah, it's only going to get worse. That's right. It's actually going to get even worse. I sort of get why people felt like that, but that's just so illogical. It saddens me very deeply that it actually worked. But that's how the world works, I guess. We are all human beings. But this is the Tesla stock buying opportunity explained by Elon Musk. So if you think that Gordon Johnson is right, well, maybe watch this one first. And if you don't think that he's right, watch it anyway. Or this one is a pretty good one. I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt Posius, and I'll see you right here.